I wanted Insecure not to sound like other shows on television. I wanted the soundtrack and the songs there to be specific to these characters, specific to our stories. With this show, independent of whether or not the show was good, I knew the music was gonna be good because I knew what I wanted the soundtrack to be. Hey, that playlist is fire! Yeah, check it up, sis. Here, our music supervisor asked me, like, artist-wise, what I wanted the show to sound like, and I said I wanted the artist to be from L.A., female, and predominantly independent. So I think in doing so, it boosted other artists in the mainstream. Personally, I'm surprised you call me after the things I said. Skirt, skirt, all niggas. Skirt up, all niggas. Skirt down, you acting like me. Acting like I was with you. It's interesting because in placing the music for the show early on, seasons one through three, you have this character who has this youthful energy because she's finding her stuff. She's a little bit irresponsible and she's a little bit reckless and she has the strong sexual appetite. And that goes for both the characters. Like their journey in particular was one that was a bit raunchy and raw and earnest. And there's something about a lot of female rap music that represents that, that kind of reckless, I am who I am, I'm gonna be who the fuck I'm gonna be behavior. And it also reflects the confidence that these characters seek. And so artists like TT and Carrie and Rico, they all represented the perfect soundtrack for our characters. I am sexy. Let's get out of here. The first time I heard my song on Insecure Soundtrack season one, I was super excited. Lavish was like a new single of mine. And I was so happy to see that it made the soundtrack and seeing Issa rap in the mirror to my record in the background was like epic. And that was before we even knew the show was gonna be a big success that it was. So I was super proud of myself in that moment. It was really wild because Party Going Dumb for me was made during like a tour time. It was during like um, me doing a lot of shows and I remember it was one of my favorite songs before I like released it I used to play it at my shows and it would just get people so lit they were wilding at Coachella it really was fun I think one of my favorite core four friendship songs has to be top down because it was specifically created for us it was a female anthem with a female artist that I respect so much and Carrie just Bang that out. I felt like it was the first draft of a song and I was like, yes, that that's it. I was asked by Issa to make the song for the scene. So they actually sent me the scene with another a whole nother song in it. And they were like, we want something that feels like this. And I was like, oh, so this is my first time actually, I guess like taking a sync brief where that's what it's called, where they ask you to make something for something. And uh, yes, yeah, so I was like, oh, this is, this seems pretty easy. Like it's a turned up song. They're driving in the car, top down on the freeway. Yeah, it was a no brainer. The show has been a source of artist discovery and where our artists will come to us and be like, because my song played on your show, we've gotten so much more attention and we've gotten these opportunities. And so hearing that over and over again and seeing the numbers, seeing the Shazams really inspired us to kind of take control of that and, and launch radio. Shout out to the team at radio for facilitating the Insecure Writing Camp, which we were able to have our favorite artist tailor and write songs. Uh, 
obviously when we had our music played in the episode, it was a big thing. And I'm just super grateful to be back here working on, on music for the next, in, in the final season. Having my music featured in Insecure was something that I wanted to happen ever since the show started and uh, definitely a dream goal of mine. So to have that realized, to see and hear that now is, um, I mean, it's a dream come true. I remember the days leading up to it too when I first heard my music on um, Insecure, the days leading up. Um, I remember I was, I, I knew it was coming, but I was just thinking of all the, the craziest things that could go wrong. Like, I was thinking, what if, you know, I'm telling my family, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna hear my music on Insecure and like it doesn't play this this week or they decided not to use it anymore. <laughs> and I was thinking that like every day up until it aired and then it being the opening song, Sweet Honey being the opening song, I flipped out. Season four, episode eight, I call it my, my soundtrack opus. Like, because I knew that it was such an important episode for, and romantic episode for these two characters, every song had to just make you feel like you were on cloud nine, like, like East and Morris. All of the songs featured had to be my favorite song. From Smino's Clink, to Frank Ocean in my room, to Blood Oranges Out of Your League, to me, Issa's happiness while walking through the city after getting digged down by her ex is, it's just, you can't, it doesn't get better than that. That is one of my probably all time favorite placements. Let me tell you, my favorite part of placing music is the sex scenes. Like the sex scenes have to feel sexy, they have to feel right. I take a lot of pride in placing the songs behind each and every sex scene. And then Show Me. Show Me was one where, you know, Lacey Duke works with Baby Rose and she directed one of our episodes for season four. And when she told me she worked with Baby Rose, I was like, I need you to promise me that Show Me is not gonna be used in any other show because I know exactly where I wanna put it. Make a promise. And that was just an exciting moment because it just felt so romantic and it felt like such a passionate reunion song. So. So. Stay. It's not a thing of I'm showing off just to show off. And both is more of a show off so that I can like kind of open up that door a little bit for you to kind of join me in this world that I'm in, you know? So I felt like it was really nice for um, Lawrence and Issa after glowing up in their own right, like to kind of come back to each other and realize like, you know, I have all of this, but it doesn't really matter if you're not a part of it. Like, I've realized like, I really want you to be here with me. Wow. I 
feel like having my music on Insecure is very important for me because I felt like the show was based on the West Coast and I am the self-proclaimed queen of the West, so it was only right naturally that I had music on there. And I do feel as if I had a lot and Issa um, conveyed that and she gave me the platform that I needed to display my dominance and I was playing. <laughs> but yeah, though, she gave me that platform that I needed and I'm very thankful and I honor her for that. She's a queen. I appreciate you, Issa. You my N-I-G-G-A for L-I-F-E. If niggas can't spell, they don't need to know. Yeah, having my music put on Insecure as an independent artist catapulted my career in a way that I could have never imagined. It helped me bring my whole team together, everybody I needed from my manager to my PR and all of the different pieces that I was missing at the time. It gave me the exposure to bring those people in. And now my career is moving at a rate that, you know, I don't think it would have been able to had I not been in Insecure. There's so many people that discovered me through Insecure. Um, I get pictures of the soundtrack all the time in my Twitter, still to this day, you know, um, just it's a, a really great music discovery platform for me. Um, and it came out before my project Jaguar, so I feel like a lot of people that were just discovering me instantly were able to um, follow and keep keep in line with what I was going to put out in the future. So I'm thankful definitely to Insecure for putting me on their platform. I said by the fourth season, we're going to be on the show. Next thing you know, later on, months later, we got an email. Oh, it was such a blessing. I was so happy. But then the dope part about it was, it's like we lived our house was like right down the street and yeah, from the scene th that we were ha had to be at. So it was like, Before it was night. an experience for me because it's like me growing up in Inglewood, it being right down the street, you know, me being at the form, me going on the market street, you know, these are my stumping grounds. So it's like, that was even better. We have to say thank you to the team for always just being our champions. And, you know, we're out here independent and just, that look alone has been so major to us. I think we were able to just get a lot of new audience members. And then, um, you know, like like I said, it's really cool to have the stories align with um, our music. So when people watch the show whenever, you know, it's, it's, it's a classic show now. So whenever they want to watch it, our, our music's in there. So that's just an amazing um, thing to have as like a milestone of your career. That was like some of the biggest money I was getting around that time. And it was the biggest opportunity I was getting offered at that time. I will forever be grateful to the show Insecure, to Issa Rae, to whoever picks the music. Um, as an independent, I'm gonna keep saying that. We don't get those type of opportunities. And she made sure that her show sounded like the heart of the city.